Hey, what's up everybody? Nico here. Today we're going over five money making slash money saving tips for college students from a college student, as you can probably tell by my dorm room. This is very different from my past videos on YouTube. Um, I thought I'd kind of make a video about this because I've learned a lot financially over the past year and uh, thought I'd help out some other college students who are looking to improve their finances as well. So starting off with my number one tip, it would be to open a student credit card. My recommendation for your first card would be the Discover It student. I have this card myself, um, got it probably about five months ago over the summer. Um, this is the design I chose, and overall, I think it's a great starter card. I know opening up your first credit card can be scary and uh, seem kind of adult-like, um, but surprise, you're in college, you are an adult now, even if you don't want to act like one. This card is great because your approval odds are pretty high. If you're a student in college and currently enrolled, you don't need a ton of credit history. This can be your first card. Just remember to pay it off in full every month so you don't accrue interest and end up paying more than what you spent on it. Don't go over the credit limit uh, that they give you. I think I started off with like a, a $500 credit limit. By opening up your first credit card, you're going to have a credit score, maybe for the first time, unless you have loans or something like that. And if you're trying to increase this score, you're gonna wanna use less than 10% utilization a month. So you're going to want to spend less than 10% of your limit every month. This is just to increase your score very quickly and make sure it just goes up um, rather than, than down. 30 is usually what's recommended, spending under 30%. If you want to increase it faster, 10% would probably be your best bet, 10% or below. Now, you don't really need a credit score now in college unless you're trying to apply for another card in the near future or take out a home or car loan, which I doubt many of us are doing in college. But it's great to start now rather than when you get out of college and you'll be years ahead of your peers in the process. Now, if you sign up today using the link below in the description, you will receive a $50 bonus um, statement credit um, once you start spending on the card and get approved for it. I believe this is only limited to a few people. So if you're one of the first to sign up below, you will receive a $50 credit, which you can use towards um, paying off purchases you make on the card. What's also great about this card is that they give a good grades incentive. I believe every year if you submit your grades and they're above a 3.0 or something like that, um, you receive around a $20 statement credit and there's no annual fee. So technically you can get paid just for having it, which is awesome. They also give you one to 2% cash back depending on what you're buying. It's 1% on everything um, you spend on the card. So whatever amount of money you end up spending, um, you'll receive 1% of that back in the form of statement credit. I believe you can also transfer it to your bank or PayPal or something like that. And then 2% on gas and eating out, um, restaurants, stuff like that. But to make it even better, they're matching your cash back for the first year. So let's say you rack up $50 in cash back after your first year. Um, Discover will match that and at the end of the year they'll give you another $50. You're kind of making money off of stuff you were going to buy anyway, but just because you have a credit card doesn't mean you should be spending more. Oh, and lastly, um, you don't have to get a palm tree card. They have a ton of different designs you can choose from. Um, I think last time I looked there were at least 40 different designs. You don't have to have a beach and palm tree on your card. Um, you can get a variety of other options as well. So that's it for tip one, open a student credit card. Now we're on to number two, which is opening an investment account. I know investing sometimes gets a bad rep, it probably reminds you of that kid in school who's obsessed with the Wolf of Wall Street, but investing is a great way to make more money on top of the money you already have. If I were to restart my investing journey, I would first start by opening a Robinhood account which you can sign up for below. By signing up, you will receive a free stock, I think ranging anywhere from $5 to $1,500, but you will receive a free stock just for signing up, free money. And I know investing can be kind of scary. You don't know how it works. Um, you don't know what companies to invest into. If I were to start over again, I'd probably just invest into the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is an ETF or exchange traded fund. 
um, that tracks the 500 largest companies in the United States. On average, it returns 10% a year. Um, that's on average, so you won't receive 10% every year. Sometimes it'll be higher, sometimes it'll be lower. I believe in the last year, it's returned around 40% or so. Um, so last year, if you were to put in $100, right now it would be worth around $140. By having money in your regular bank account or savings account, um, you might be returning maybe half a percentage a year um, just by keeping it in there. Um, but inflation is actually around 2 to 3% a year. Um, so every year that you're keeping money in your bank account, it's actually decreasing in value. By investing in something like the S&P 500, you are on average beating inflation by 7% a year. The best time to start is always just now. Um, there's no point in trying to time the market, wait for it to correct, wait for it to come down. You can always just dollar cost average in um, or buy equal amounts every certain time interval. So you can throw in a dollar a day for a year, invest $365 at different price points, and you'll have a good solid average uh, cost basis for that stock. A beautiful thing about the stock market is compound interest. Um, so let's say you invested $100 now and the S&P returned 10% for the year. Next year, you would have $110. The next year, if it returned 10% again, you would not be receiving 10% on your initial investment of $100, but rather 10% on that $110. That leaves you with $121 after the second year if it's returning 10%. Now, if you've taken calc or pre-calc before, um, you'll know the e to the x function, the exponential function. Um, compound interest is kind of just like that. Um, it starts off growing very slowly, but over time, it increases at a more rapid rate. So the longer you have money in the market, um, the faster that compounding is going to occur and the faster your money will be worth more. So that's it for number two, um, open an investing account. Um, I would do so with Robinhood just because it's a, a fairly easy UI to use. And I know that was kind of all over the place. If you have any questions, I can always answer them below. Um, but moving on to number three, stop buying things you don't need and stop buying liabilities. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to stop drinking your $5 Starbucks coffee. Uh, of course, you don't have to if you don't want to, but start being more frugal with your purchases. Stop spending every cent you make and start saving some of it, start investing some of it. Um, just make money with the money you have instead of spending it all. Start watching where your money is going so you can spend less in those areas. Now, instead of buying liabilities or things that only decrease in value over time, start buying assets. Assets are things that you can invest in that will make you money. By investing the money you could have spent on liabilities into assets, you're going to increase your wealth over time and you're going to make money on the money you already have. Opening a credit card is a great way to start managing your money because you can see the individual purchases you're making in certain categories and really force you to start tracking your spending. That's tip number three. Moving on to tip number four, try to get a summer job. I'm a student athlete, so I don't have time to work during the school year while balancing sports and school. So I like to work over summer or over breaks. Getting a summer job will make you money. Um, it'll force you to write your first resume for the first time, which you'll need to do over the course of your years after college. So you'll gain a little bit of experience there. There are plenty of YouTube videos um, to help you write your first resume. After college, guess what? Your parents aren't going to be your bank account unless you're a trust fund kid. You're going to need to start managing your own finances and it's better if you start now rather than waiting till you graduate. Now your summer job doesn't have to be at some crazy big company um, like Goldman Sachs or I don't know, Facebook. It can be just working at a local restaurant, local grocery store, anything like that. You can, you can door dash, work on your own time, and you don't even have to work full time. You can work part time. That gives you time to spend time with your friends during the summer and also make some money um, when you're not doing anything. That's tip number four. Lastly, we have tip number five. Tip number five is to sell stuff you don't need. These can be things like clothes, textbooks, notes from classes you took. These are things you already have, but can make money off of. 
I used to sell old clothes on Depop, cleaned up my closet and made me some cash in the process. So those are just five simple ways you can save or make money as a college student. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, or comment if you have any questions and I'll go ahead and answer those. But thank you for watching. Hope these tips help you out in some shape or form and have a great rest of your day. Peace.